Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the next session of uh, uh, Delphi Economic Forum. We're at day four. We are uh, uh, about to start our next discussion, which is uh, the EU accession of uh, Western Balkans, credibility, predictability, and political steer. Uh, I will start by introducing our uh, uh, the leaders from the Western Balkans and uh, uh, our EU commissioner. Uh, right of this moment, uh, at this moment, uh, the Commissioner for Enlargement and uh, Neighborhood of the European Commission, Mr. Oliver Varheli, is with us. The Prime Minister of Serbia, Anna Brnabic. The Prime Minister of Albania, Edi Rama. And the former Prime Minister of uh, North Macedonia, uh, Mr. Zoran Zaev. Before uh, starting to uh, discuss, uh, we are going to uh, shortly watch a, a short uh, a recorded message from the President of uh, Serbia, uh, Mr. Aleksandar Vucic. Dear Chair Nedos, dear Commissioner Varhili, and dear friends, it is Oran and Anna. I'm honored to have an opportunity to address you today and to say that we very much appreciate and respect our friendship, friendship between our three countries, Albania, North Macedonia, Serbia, but our friendship and our common path to the EU and we very much appreciate hard work, dedicated and devoted work so far done by Commissioner Varhili and once again Your Excellency, thank you very much for great contribution that you have given so far to our region and to Serbia as well. I wanted to say that the Republic of Serbia has been making maximum efforts towards the reform processes along the European integration path, including the steps focused on achieving full rule of law, reform of the economic sector and support to free media. And it's not always an easy situation and we don't deliver always and only the very best results. But we are doing our best and I'm absolutely certain that with your support, Commissioner Varhili, and with all the other European friends, we can do much more in the future. You know that with our friends from the Western Balkans, we have, com we have commenced recently an initiative of some people might say, Mini Schengen, Eddie, is always angry when I, when I say that because it's Serbian defiant approach, he is more rational and pragmatic. But the essence, the substance of that agreement is to organize and to secure a free flow of goods, people, capital and services. And we are profoundly grateful to European Union that has always been advocating the same values. We see that we should cooperate together not only on trade-related trade issues, we also want to improve everything that is related to connectivity and infrastructure. That's something of an, of an utmost importance for all our countries. Second, I think that big political fight for the youth and generations to come is even more important than anything else. And that's what we can do only if we work jointly, only if we work completely together. When I say together, I mean all together, European Union and all our countries from the Western Balkans. There can, there can be no sustainable future for our nations if youth remains stacked in high employment rates and without a chance to reach out to its first neighbors. Then, wanted to say that we should 
revive and renew trust and confidence between our countries. And I can tell you that you cannot easily find people, and I'm very proud of that fact, in Serbia that would say something, not against North Macedonia, it has never been the case, but not even against Albania. And that's something that I'm very much proud of. And that's a result of our common work in the last few years. And I uh, wanted to say that I think that we have a lot of, a lot of space to improve our relationship, uh, working together on economical issues, on economic issues, but also on political agenda. And uh, let me finish and would like to ask you, Commissioner Varhili, once again, just to keep on working dedicatedly as you have already done so far, because that's very important for all three of us. And I wish all three governments to build bridges of confidence, trust and faith between each other. And uh, that's something that people from our region will know how to respect and appreciate. And let me finish this brief statement with Henry Ford's words, which I like the most. Coming together is a beginning. Keeping together is progress. Working together is a success. Thank you all and wish you great work and uh, hope to see you and to host you all as soon as possible here in Belgrade. Well, that was the recorded message of uh, Mr. Vucic. I will uh, 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 right away go to Mr. Varheli and ask for an initial comment uh, on what are the next steps that we are waiting on the process uh, uh, of your office, actually, uh, EU enlargement, uh, during the, the next uh, few months, I would say. We know that there is a new framework that uh, is about to be, uh, 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 to be presented. Uh, we are also expecting what's going to happen uh, in the next uh, negotiating uh, uh, steps with Serbia. So uh, can you please give us some insight on that? Thank you very much. First of all, thank you very much for having me. And uh, thank you very much for uh, the possibility to contribute to this uh, very famous uh, forum of the Delphi, the Delphi Economic uh, Forum. I'm quite sad that we have to do it uh, over a video, but maybe next year uh, we would be fortunate to visit that, uh, that wonderful city of Delphi. Um, first of all, as uh, you have seen, or you may have seen, this uh, commission from the very first day, uh, including myself in it, uh, has taken the Western Balkans and the relations with the Western Balkans uh, to be uh, a high priority, maybe one of its uh, uh, highest uh, priorities. And uh, we have started the work very quickly. And I'm quite happy to, uh, to list uh, all the things we have done, because among them, we already have some common uh, results that we have been able to put together. You have seen uh, that uh, compared to last October, we have a new methodology for uh, the enlargement negotiations and we have been able to open the accession negotiations with North Macedonia and Albania. Needless to say that um, all these efforts could not have been done unless the two countries have delivered, which they have. And this is why as a package uh, we have been able to get this agreed by the member states back in March. Uh, unfortunately, our work got interrupted. Uh, the third element is still missing, which is a substantial uh, economic uh, development and investment plan for the entire region. But rest assured, that part is also uh, coming. I do hope to be able to present it to you very early in the autumn. All this is, of course, uh, dependent uh, on the adoption of the MFF uh, for the EU. Now, uh, the COVID crisis unfortunately interrupted uh, our work a bit, but not so much because uh, for the time being, uh, we only missed one deadline and I, and I will work very hard that the delay is not going to be significant. Uh, other than that, I think we have been able to deliver also uh, in relation to the COVID crisis. We have uh, provided the help of over financial assistance over 
3.3 billion euros uh, during the crisis. Uh, and we have also shown our solidarity and the importance uh, to keep us together with the Western Balkan countries through the Zagreb summit, uh, where our leaders, uh, as an exceptional uh, occasion, have devoted one of their uh, video uh, meetings with the leaders of the Western Balkan. I think this is also a very important sign uh, how committed we all are uh, to have the Western Balkan uh, integrated into uh, the EU. We Thank will you. come forward. And, sorry, just one, one, one more uh, addition. We will come forward with the uh, negotiating framework uh, in the coming days. This is the next step uh, in the accession negotiations uh, with Albania and North Macedonia. Uh, and on that basis, we, we start very quickly work in the Council so that we get the approval of the member states uh, to move on. Well, Mr. Valkin, thank you. Keep, uh, I will return on the COVID-19 uh, uh, mm -hmm. cooperation between the uh, European Union and the Western Balkans. I think that this is uh, uh, something that we, we should put some more light on. And I'd like to go to the Prime Minister of Albania, and uh, Mr. Rama, and uh, ask him about uh, uh, how does uh, Tirana uh, see what is happening right now uh, in the in the framework of uh, uh, the chapters that Albania is talking with Brussels uh, in regard of its uh, European uh, accession. First of all, um, I want to very sincerely and not just for nice words of circumstances to thank you and to thank uh, the Delphi Economic Forum for uh, inviting us and for creating this space, although uh, the format is uh, quite uh, restrained uh, due to the conditions. And we know that would have been much better if we could gather uh, life in a normal uh, format. Uh, I thank you because uh, last year uh, we had here in Tirana a session of uh, the Delphi uh, Forum uh, or under the auspices of the Delphi Forum and my, my request or my suggestion to include uh, more of uh, Albania but also to extend it regionally in your format uh, seems to be uh, seems to be quite wonderfully and graciously uh, realized. So thank you for that. Uh, and I want to thank you, uh, the commissioner, for his uh, generous uh, presence because uh, uh, I know he is a busy man, and uh, there are many things now uh, going on in Brussels. Uh, also regarding uh, the, the path forward for Albania and North Macedonia due to uh, the continuous discussion about uh, fine-tuning the language uh, between the member states in uh, defining uh, all the mechanisms of new methodology. Uh, and of course, it's a pleasure to be here with uh, Anna and uh, with Zoran, uh, great uh, friends and uh, also, uh, let's say, partners in uh, this common uh, this common effort, uh, which, as uh, the president of Serbia uh, very well uh, mentioned, is an effort to uh, extend. Uh, to extend uh, the cooperation uh, in the frame of uh, what he likes to, uh, to, 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 to name Mini Schengen and what I hate to name Mini Schengen, but okay, it's, uh, it's one of our, if, of our uh, uh, let's say, uh, 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 different views. Uh, uh, within the for the frame of the four freedoms of Europe. 
cost of freedom of movement of people, of goods, of uh, capitals and services. And uh, it looks it looks quite uh, easy and it looks quite natural and it looks quite simple, but it's not easy and it's not simple. We know that uh, it's not, uh, let's say, uh, just a walk in a, in a you know, paved uh, road, but it's, uh, it's really a struggle and uh, we have to fight with many with many uh, shortcomings uh, of our own administrations, uh, of uh, our own, I mean, the society's mindset, uh, and uh, all the rest. But I see it as uh, as a process that is complementary with our integration, uh, EU integration in the whole process. And I'm uh, grateful to the commissioner because uh, he has not only uh, praised it uh, in words, but he's uh, working uh, with us to uh, to make it to make it real indeed. And uh, this is this is a good thing. And more EU will recognize this process as not only. Uh, not only good in principle, but uh, necessary in the in the real in the real uh, effort and the real uh, work about EU integration itself. Better it will be for everyone. And uh, the last thing I would say is that uh, we have a lot of things to to do for sure. Uh, but if we just assess from where we started many things and many changes uh, have happened and the communication the interaction the, the mutual understanding the way to address uh, to address uh, conflictual uh, not only opinions but situations uh, has uh, has uh, improved uh, has improved dramatically and uh, this is this is really uh, a very sane uh, process and uh, I very much hope and I conclude here that Delphi uh, Forum will be an added value to, to this process because uh, uh, we, need, uh, we need to work a lot together among our countries in the region and uh, we need also partners that will uh, be part of this joint work when it comes to promote our cooperation in terms of concrete projects, in terms of investments, in terms of um, in terms of reaching out to let as much as possible people around us and around the world uh, uh, be informed and understand how much uh, things are changing here and uh, how uh, much potentials these countries uh, have and uh, <clears throat> how many opportunities uh, we can offer them all together. So thank you again and uh, and uh, yeah, so let's uh, continue work together and let be together hopefully next year in a different uh, in a different atmosphere and uh, you know not just in virtual space. Uh, thank you, Mr. Prime Minister. I will uh, like now go to Belgrade and uh, ask uh, Ms. Brnabic, of course, we already heard the President uh, uh, addressing uh, some of uh, the general uh, points uh, that uh, Serbia views its European uh, uh, Union uh, negotiation and uh, report, I would generally say. I would like to ask you something, uh, I would say, probably a little bit more philosophical. Is uh, EU just a foreign policy uh, uh, target for Serbia or, or is it just uh, something that uh, at, at your point of view is something that should naturally occur at some, at some point, not only in terms of you know, hardcore uh, economic or uh, uh, foreign policy targets? Everyone, I'm, uh, I'm glad to see you all and I hope that uh, soon enough we will be able to 
see each other in, in person. Uh, conferences in person, I think, make much, much more sense. Uh, to answer your question, I think that it's not just a uh, kind of uh, foreign policy uh, goal. It's not our strategic, uh, uh, strategic focus of our foreign policy. I deeply believe that uh, Serbia, as well as the Western Balkans, uh, actually belong to, um, to the European family of nations, uh, not just economically, but also geographically, culturally, traditionally, in all, in, in, in any way you look at it. I think that, uh, that Serbia, but also Western Balkans, is naturally part of the EU and belongs to the EU, and that uh, the long-term uh, peace, stability, and strength of the Western Balkans and the EU um, is possible uh, only once the Europe, the, the entire Europe is united, meaning that Western Balkans becomes part of the EU. I think that at the end of the day, although we are all, we all have to negotiate and go through certain negotiation process that is currently marked by these 35 di different chapters, I think that the end of, at the end of the day, the decision uh, of the EU for us to join the EU will be a political one. Uh, and I think that more than anything else, it's a political decision. Yes, absolutely. We need to align our uh, legislation um, and, and, and some of the practices with the EU standards. You know, we have to work more on the kind of economic stability, the rule of law, the transparent and uh, and, and, and the efficient public administration on the environmental protection. But at the end of the day, the decision by the EU for us to join the EU is going to be a political one. And I think, obviously, I'm not the one to say because we are an aspiring member, but I, in my view, uh, the, it, it is also in the strategic interest of the EU for us to become part of the EU as soon as, as possible. Uh, now, having said that, I also have to say that our decision to push for reforms in order to have stronger economy, more efficient, more transparent public administration, rule of law, environmental protection, to resolve all outsa outstanding conflicts is, should be driven by our, us, ourselves, not because of the EU, but because that's, that's important for the quality of life of our citizens. So overall, I think that these two things really go hand in hand and that uh, Western Balkans is um, or should be as important to the EU as the EU is important to, to us. Uh, I would also like to say that a big, big thanks to uh, Commissioner uh, Oliver Vertely for all of his support and really deep, thorough understanding of these issues, deep knowledge of the situation in the Western Balkans, and why Western Balkans is important to the EU and why EU is important to the Western Balkans. Uh, we could not hope for a better commissioner in the same way as I think that EU could not wish for a better commissioner which will serve as kind of a natural bridge between the European Union and the, and the Western Balkans. Now, Serbia is deeply committed to the EU integration. That remains our strategic focus. But I, I, would, I would say that we are equally committed to regional stability and regional cooperation because, as President Vucic uh, has said, uh, without, I think, in a nutshell, without a stable and strong region, uh, there is no stable and strong Serbia. In the same way as Without a stable and strong region, there is no stable and strong North Macedonia or Albania or Montenegro or anyone else in the region. And uh, the more stable and stronger we are, 
uh, better candidates for the EU we become. And hence this mini Schengen or Four Freedoms Initiative. The whole, the whole idea is for us to work closer together, to work on the connectivity agenda, on uh, infrastructure, uh, which will enable um, easier flow of goods and people from one country to the other. Um, exchange between our youth, uh, investment promotion, which is equally important to all of us, and overall just cooperation, which will enable that we first and foremost secure a better, better quality of life for our citizens here in the region, be them Albanians or Macedonians or, or Serbs or Bosniaks, Montenegrin, what, what, whatever. Uh, and then we will fulfill also the conditions to join the EU. But to end, I think that that, that decision on behalf, on, from coming from the EU will, will, will uh, have to be a political decision. Uh, thank you, Ms. Brnabic. I will uh, go directly to, to Mr. Zaev. Uh, you are one of, I would say, the leading architects of the Prespes Agreement. You're going to have uh, an election uh, soon in, uh, in North Macedonia. Of course, here in Greece, we have followed very thoroughly the, politica, the political discourse uh, in North Macedonia. And uh, I would like to ask you that if you believe that uh, uh, a tricky, if I may say, uh, not to characterize it uh, in any other way, uh, outcome, in uh, the North Macedonian election. Will it uh, jeopardize the progress that uh, you have made uh, by putting the country in, into NATO and uh, opening the negotiation process with the European Union? Thank you very much, first of all, Mr. Nedos and the Office Summit for this invitation. It's a great pleasure for me to be part of the Office Summit, especially together with Commissioner Varkhael but also together with my good friends, uh, Anna and Eddie. Uh, really, uh, a lot of positive things happen in the uh, Western Balkan. Only this coronavirus, I hope, will pass away as soon as possible. So to continue in all these positive thoughts and cooperation, what is really implemented between the all countries in the Balkans, and of course, leading by the European members, but together with us, like candidate countries from the Western Western Balkan. I appreciate very much the situation, what we have it, for example, in the moment uh, from Athens, Delphi Summit, give us a space like uh, Balkan countries who uh, intend to be full members of European Union. And we are leaded by the European Commissioner who come from the north of our borders, like Western country from Hungary, who know very well Western Balkan. I agree with Anna and Eddie, and we get luck and we are luck uh, very much because of this situation. We have friends around us who are dedicated to help to continuing our reforms, our improvement like country until we Europe is uh, our uh, countries and became a full member of the European Union. As President Vucic and Eddie and Anna mentioned it, we are dedicated to European agenda, but we can do uh, more than that. And we offer this for Freedoms Initiative and to try to, to be a good example to our friends from European Union member countries that we can do even more. First of all, for our citizens, because there is a lot of obstacles inside Western Balkan we need to remove, to make uh, deliver bigger trust to our institutions and to help life for our citizens. But also this initiative is not only from Serbia, Albania and North Macedonia, but it's also open for other countries in the Western Balkan and for other countries in the Balkan and after that in the European, in the European Union. And I hope we'll be uh, in great help for the whole citizens here in Southeastern Europe because we can do more. And I know that if the region work better and cooperate better, we will really achieve better life for our citizens and especially to stop this migration from Southeastern Europe going in the Western and North Europe because we need qualified workforce and we need our young people like motor power to keep in our region and to, to, to deliver the trust for the future in the next generations. 
So PRESPA agreement is a good sign for the future of the whole Balkan. Really, the agreement is done. Now uh, it's time to make business, to make bigger cooperation, to deliver bigger trust, because we have the same culture, the same tradition, you know, we have the same problems, and uh, of course I know that we can help each other. So in that way, really, I believe that the whole neighboring country around us, members of European Union, are very much dedicated to the European future of uh, Western Balkan. We appreciate that very much, and in the future, we will give more and more reasons for that support, what we get it. I'm very happy because during the mandate of the uh, Commissioner Varheu, uh, we get historical decision after 15 years to, to have decision for start negotiation. And I know how much effort he gives to, for the new methodology, all these details, because it's the first time. But I think it will be a fair chance for all of us. Really, if we are really dedicated with good success, we will get more and more award and more and more chapters or clusters together. That means immediately better life for, for our citizens. But uh, really, all European citizens need to know that we cooperate inside Western Balkan because we want to be uh, better friends and better partners to European Union countries and European citizens. We will continue in European manner, uh, manners. We believe in European values, and I believe as soon as possible we will be prepared to be full members of the European Union. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Zaev. Uh, in this point, I would say that I'm going to ask for another question from you and, uh, and then for another one as a concluded re remark. So please, let's be as brief as possible because we have already uh, uh, crunched most of our time. Mr. Varheli, uh, you already mentioned uh, the COVID-19 uh, uh, cooperation between the EU, uh, the European Commission and uh, uh, some of the Western Balkan countries. I would like for you to elaborate a little bit on this and then to touch upon issues that uh, uh, are uh, about economy and about connectivity, digitalization, and how uh, can the European Commission, can the European Union uh, help these countries uh, meet the European standards even before uh, going into uh, full integration, full accession? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, very quickly, um, first of all, we provided uh, immediate financial support in the form of um, medical equipment. We dedicated 80 million euros uh, to that. And we have been delivering uh, these equipment already uh, from very early on, and we still continue to, to do that. Uh, on top of that, uh, we are allocating another 455 million euros uh, for the second uh, part of the crisis, which includes also uh, the economic uh, side uh, of uh, the damage that this virus has caused. So we are supporting uh, the economy, we are supporting the SMEs, we are providing liquidity uh, through uh, the banks, and we are, uh, as a third uh, way of helping, we are also providing uh, for five countries macro financial assistance. Uh, five uh, this uh, crisis. Uh, this is a very important uh, package that we have put together. Altogether, we are talking about 3.3 billion euros in help to the region. On top of this, we have included uh, the Western Balkans in many of our uh, initiatives that have been reserved for the member states to help uh, them with the crisis. The first was the Green Lane initiatives. I, I really salute each and every country in the Western Balkans that they understood very quickly and they implemented it very quickly so that the economies could continue to function. And we had um, a regional cooperation unprecedented and on which uh, we want to build the next, uh, the next part of our journey, which is the economic development plan. Uh, as recently as yesterday, uh, we have uh, adopted um, uh, for our member states how and when to reopen the borders within the EU, but also towards third countries. And in that, we made the proposal so that, that uh, our, uh, the borders.
borders with third countries to the Western Balkans as early as from 1st of July. I do hope that our member states will be will be uh, taking this recommendation of ours. And I also have to say a big thank you countries of the Western Balkans because they have also provided help, very valuable help to our own member states uh, by sending doctors, by sending medical equipment. I think it was a, a great, great show of solidarity. Now on the economic development plan and investment plan, as I said, this is due in, um, in uh, um, autumn, early autumn, and uh, we try to bring closer the, the economic development much faster uh, to the Balkans to integrate their economies much faster, much uh, more meaningfully um, in, uh, in an accelerated fashion. In that, of course, connectivity, be it uh, transport, be it energy, is going to be key. But also, we want to um, include our Western Balkan partners in our own policies like the Green Deal uh, or the digital uh, economy, the digitization of our economies. And for that, uh, we will have funds dedicated in the uh, next MFF once uh, our member states agree on it. We made a proposal to raise the IPA funding uh, back to where we have been proposing it in 2018. So we are allocating to the IPA funding 14 and a half billion, but we made a new proposal so that from the recovery instrument can benefit. We are provide we are proposing to the member states 10 and a half billion euros in the neighborhood and development uh, cooperation instrument, uh, part of which uh, is dedicated to the Western Balkans. So we are we are in this together and we will work together and we will make uh, the Western Balkan much to us. Thank you, Mr. Varkhele. I will go to, to Mr. Ramo now. And uh, I would like to ask, you know, I can't help that I'm also a diplomatic editor. So, uh, you know, there are uh, bilateral issues between... Uh, between Greece and Albania, uh, which could, uh, w which I'm quite sure that uh, you want them resolved be before entering the European Union. And uh, actually, uh, there is a hot topic here in Greece uh, the, during the last days. Uh, there was a the maritime zone agreement between uh, Greece and Italy. Uh, Greece and Albania do not have a delimited uh, maritime zone. And I wanted to ask you that if you see uh, foresee something happening in that uh, respect uh, in the following future? First of all, I don't think that uh, we have particular problems uh, with Greece, between Albania and Greece. I think uh, there are issues uh, that need to be addressed and uh, have been addressed have been addressed uh, in the past, uh, are being addressed, and progress has been and is being made. Uh, but of course, there is still to do. Uh, let me give you an example. Uh, there, is, uh, there is an issue that comes, uh, that comes uh, forward time after time uh, on the Greek side about um, the so-called property rights of the minority. Uh, is it true that uh, uh, people uh, of the minority have uh, problems with uh, rights of property? Yes. But uh, it's only them having problems with rights of property? No. The whole country, uh, every single uh, kilometer square of the country, uh, has, uh, has a burden of uh, complicated heritage about uh, property rights uh, uh, titles, about uh, registries, about uh, systems. And as a matter of fact, the property issue in Albania has been uh, complicated uh, a lot for the ordinary citizens during uh, the whole years of transition and uh, 
there is not a Deus Ex mach uh, as Machina solution. Uh, we are working to improve uh, uh, to improve in this direction. We've improved a lot. Uh, we have a totally new uh, legislation that has been also supported by the by the Strasbourg uh, uh, Strasbourg Court of Human Rights. So. Uh, is it an issue between Albanians, Albania and Greece? Uh, uh, no, it's an issue of the, of course, uh, needs and, uh, and has the legitimate attention of uh, the Greek uh, government vis-à-vis -vis, uh, the, the, the Greek uh, nationals uh, that uh, are citizens of our country. But it's not an issue that uh, is linked with the fact that these people are uh, with a different uh, nationality. Uh, so it's just one of the, of the, of the issues. Uh, I took it as an example. Uh, when it comes to the maritime uh, delegation, uh, yes, it's, uh, it's an issue. Uh, we don't have yet a common understanding. Uh, but look, Greece and Italy are there, are part of the European Union since uh, so many years, and uh, they uh, agreed agreed on the delimitation just a few days ago. So they signed it, as you mentioned. So these are complicated issues for everyone, and uh, you know. But sometimes uh, in our region, uh, it's uh, quite uh, it's quite uh, fashionable to use issues that have an objective, uh, an objective uh, difficulty as uh, subjects for politics, for campaigning, for fighting uh, each other at home. Uh, what I have uh, experienced uh, and what I've learned from not only experience, but also from uh, my life uh, on this, uh, on this uh, beautiful world, is that uh, most of the time uh, the issues uh, that uh, become uh, political and become hot in a political scene vis-a-vis uh, -vis neighbors or vis-a-vis -vis others are basically engines to fight within the countries uh, for a political fight within the countries. So uh, we have progressed also on that. Uh, on the delimitation, uh, we have progressed. It's not easy, but uh, we have all the goodwill and uh, the relations are, in my view, are good. Uh, and there is one thing, there is one thing which is absolutely true. The relations between Albanians and Greeks as people are, are much better than the relations between Albania and Greece as states and as governments. The level of uh, cooperation and of understanding and of uh, everything uh, in the in terms of the people to people is it's 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 much more uh, exemplary than the level of cooperation and understanding in the government level, and I'm not talking about now, I'm talking about the 30 years of, uh, of relations after, after Albania opened up and uh, got out of communism. But I have to say that um, the relations as such can be better, but are very good. And during this COVID crisis, uh, we had uh, absolutely another example of, uh, of uh, understanding very well the need for each other and of exchanging and of helping the Greek government uh, was very gracious, was very gracious vis-a-vis uh, -vis the many Albanian uh, people that uh, have uh, the so-called uh, temporary permissions of work in Greece because of, uh, of, the, of, the, of the lockdown. Uh, many of these permissions expired based on the Greek legislation and rightly so, uh, the expiration of permissions of work is uh, sanctionable and, uh, and uh, it didn't happen. So the Greek government uh, gave the word that it will not trigger this, uh, this uh, legal mechanism to punish 
all, so many Albanians that uh, were there while the borders were shut down and uh, it didn't happen. So, you know, it looks like a simple uh, thing and uh, do, does not even deserve to be mentioned, but it's not. It's really good. And uh, also, uh, we had exchanges with the Prime Minister, also in the level of the cabinets, and also uh, in other levels about the experience with COVID, about common uh, approaches, and so on. So, uh, I am very optimistic about the Greek Albanian relations. And as I am very optimistic about the Albanian um, uh, Serbian relations, about the Albanian North Macedonian relations, and about in general relations uh, in uh, in the region. Well, thank you, Mr. Zaev, uh, Mr. Rama. Sorry, I'd like to go to Mr. Uh, the goal is to be the reason to have a, a conflict here and to to break uh, the screen of computers. You know, of if course, say, of course. If you say to uh, the prime minister of another country the name of uh, someone else, this could have been. Terrible. Of course now, not. My my bad. My bad. Uh, no, but uh, since <laughs> since uh, we have taken most of our time, I'd like to go to Ms. Bernabic now, uh, then to uh, to Mr. Zaev, and uh, uh, have a, a concluding remark from uh, Mr. Varheli. So uh, I'd like to give the floor to Ms. Bernabic right now. And uh, I, I would like you to elaborate a little bit on uh, the... You, you are, of course, a, a country that has the, these EU aspirations, but at the same time, you have a very... Uh, special relationship with countries such as uh, Russia and uh, and China. Uh, do you think that this is uh, uh, this could be an obstacle, or is this something that uh, uh, somehow uh, highlights the singularity of Serbia, but also the the need to uh, for the European Union to be more integral? Thank you. Yes, we have a very good relationship with uh, the People's Republic of China as well as the, the Russian Federation. Um, and uh, it's that, that is something that is uh, quite often uh, uh, um, uh, brought up by, by some, of the, some of the EU officials or EU member countries as, uh, as, uh, as a topic, I would say. Although I, I, can't, I can't say that I fully understand why that's an issue and especially uh, when, when it comes down to the relationship with the, the, the People's Republic of China. Um, when you look at the numbers, I think 90% of uh, total Chinese investments in Europe are in the Western Europe. And uh, some 10% um, are in, this, in, the, in the Western Balkans, including, including Serbia. Uh, so, if you look at, at things in that manner, then I would say that, uh, you know, EU should be supportive of, uh, of Chinese investments in Serbia. Firstly, because uh, they're not as big as the EU invest investments. Uh, EU is still total investments uh, in, in, if you look at the total investments in Serbia, 65 to 70% of total investments are from the, from the EU. Secondly, because the Chinese investments in Serbia also strengthen Serbia's economy. And uh, it's in the EU's interest that Serbia's economy is, is growing stronger. Uh, it's also one of, uh, one, of the, one of the goals, I think, of the stabilization association process is that not just Serbia's economy, but all of the accession countries' eco economies are, are, are getting stronger so that once we become part of the EU, um, we, we do not uh, lag behind and we do not need that kind of um, financial assistance that some of, the, some of the EU member countries that later joined the EU needed. Uh, so in that respect, I think the Chinese investments in Serbia, also considering that they are very minor uh, compared to the EU investments in Serbia, are taking us in the direction that also EU wants us to go. Us, 
as kind of president and prime ministers Ms. Uh, Ms. Brabis, as well. Just, let's let's con let's conclude, please, Mr. Brabis. Let's sure. talk to your statement. And, there are, and 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 in in terms of the the Russian investments, they are also similar to investments that Russia has in uh, some of the EU member countries, and are important for the sectors that that. that, that are equally important for the EU and uh, and first and foremost that's energy sector. So no, I don't I, I don't see that as competing interests. I actually see that that can work very well as synergy. Thank you, uh, Mr. Zaev. Please a short comment from you, like a concluding remark, and then I'll go to Mr. Varheli. Please as short as possible because we're almost out of time. Okay, with. Uh last three years uh, achievement in the whole region not only for north macedonia i think that all together all us together send a message of bigger friendship here in the whole region i think that we really need to help each other more and more i will use opportunity only to invite everybody to think about to, uh, very soon open borders to support each other economically to, through tourism but also through better trade normally because we need to function during the, this corona crisis because even our national strategies will become our regional or our continental strategies here because we need to work in economic way so helping each other uh, during the whole period of time i think will put every economy every state in a better position because we are really very much connected and even this Delphi Summit give us opportunity once again to be more connected, to be more honest and more friendly. And I hope that we will be, at the end of the day, better servants to our citizens and to the whole region. Thank you. Well, thank you, Mr. Zaev. Now, Mr. Varheli, please conclude this uh, discussion for us and uh, share uh, a few insights from what are the EU plans from now on. Um, well, as I said, uh, the major, uh, the major but still missing from this uh, renewed enlargement uh, strategy is the economic uh, development and investment plan. And once we have that in place, I think uh, it will be uh, a, a key tool uh, also for the post-pandemic uh, economic recovery. And not only that, but it is going to deliver mid-term, long-term uh, economic strategy for the entire region not only for those uh, countries uh, who are negotiating for membership, but also those who, who have not yet started that process, but hopefully we will start uh, doing that uh, also. I think uh, with this uh, last uh, element still missing, uh, we will reestablish uh, the importance of the European Union and the importance of cooperation uh, between the European Union and Western Balkans on the Western Balkans, I'm, and I'm more than happy to work for that. Well, thank you, Mr. Commissioner. At this point, I would like to uh, conclude this uh, uh, online uh, session. Thanks, Mr. Varheli, uh, Ms. Bernabic, uh, Mr. Rama. I hope next time we ask you for an interview, you won't remember this. And uh, Mr. Zaev.